And a lot of us aspire to have great mental health so we can be happier people. But what does that really mean? We all want to be in great physical health, but we all also want to be in great mental health. We all want to be in great physical shape, have a six pack, have pecs and biceps, have huge legs. Well, some of us. And a lot of us aspire to have great mental health so we can be happier people and happier people around those who are important to us. But what does that really mean? You wouldn't expect to be in great physical shape without doing the exercises that are required. It doesn't mean that you have to lift 500 pounds for a deadlift right when you start working out. But it does mean that you have to start increasing resistance. Same thing applies to mental health. You have to start putting in little bits of effort in the beginning in order to see results. And that means you have to do it consistently. You have to do the workouts that are required to get in mental shape. Now the three exercises I commonly see for better mental health are reflection, meditation, and gratitude. And these three have a time factor to them as well. Now the first exercise is reflection. In this exercise, you want to take an objective look into the past as much as possible so that you can understand it. One of the biggest mistakes people make with this exercise is that they only look at reflection in terms of what happened, the data and the facts of that day and what occurred. The problem with this is that when you look at just what happened, it's not unique to you. There's no lesson learned and there's no emotional attachment. It's simply data driven. And if you want data driven, you could just record the events on a camcorder, but that's not what you want in reflection. What you want to do in reflection is to look back at it objectively, but learn from your interpretation from it. What did you observe? How did it affect you personally? What lessons did you learn from it? How could you carry this information going forward? How can you prevent the events of the past from happening again? These are all questions you want to ask yourself in the exercise of reflection. You also see this mistake happen a lot in couples. They'll ask each other, how was your day? And that's not a bad question per se. The problem is that people interpret this question as what are the events that happened today? Same thing applies here, is that when people have this conversation, they'll talk about the events that happened in a factual manner. In order to enhance this question and build a better connection with your significant other, you want to talk about how the events of the day affected you. What did you learn from it? And how will you carry this information going forward? Another thing reflection does is that it helps you slow down time. One of the biggest complaints that we have as adults is that time flies. The perception of time is very different for an adult as it is for a kid. Children can only see things in terms of months and days. The concept of years and decades are very foreign to them, so they don't have that extended scope. As adults, it's easier for us to see things in years and decades because we've lived through them. As a result, the smaller increments, such as days and minutes, tend to get grouped together in our perception, which is why time flies so quickly as adults. In order to extend that time, we need to extend our perception of each day. And to do that, you can reflect on every single day instead of just letting them pass you by. The second exercise you could do to improve your mental health is meditate. Meditation is the observation of self and environment in the present moment. Now in the first exercise, we talked about what happened in the past. Meditation is what happens in the present. The biggest mistake people make with meditation is they think they just sit unproductively in a quiet environment, not doing anything. And then when they realize they can't do it for more than a couple of minutes, they give up. Meditation is a skill and it takes practice. You have to build up the time that you could sit still for it. As you sit, you have to observe the things around you without getting sucked into the emotional attachments that you have. You have to observe your physical sense of self and the environment. You can't let the thoughts of the future or the past influence what you're observing in the present. The reason meditation is so powerful is twofold. One, it takes you out of that emotional state. If you're able to observe yourself without being sucked into the emotional state, it helps you control your emotions better. The second thing it does is it helps you observe yourself better. When you listen to your body and how it's emotionally responding, you have a better sense of when you're about to feel an emotion and you won't get sucked into it. And the third exercise for mental health is gratitude. Much like meditation, gratitude is concerned with the present and not so concerned with the future or the past. The mistake people make is that they think about the things they don't have in the past 
or the things they won't have in the future. This spirals our mind out of control and we lose sight of what gratitude is. Another mistake people make is that they think gratitude is a delusion about things that are happy when, in fact, they aren't. Gratitude helps you look more clearly at the facts of the situation. You objectively realize that there are things in your life that are better than other people. And not to feel superior to them, but it's so that you're thankful that you have them. Many of us do this exercise a lot better during the holidays, especially here in the US when there's Thanksgiving. We're more grateful and we realize we have more things that we should be grateful for as compared to the other times of the year. If you could practice this every day and be grateful for the things that you do have that other people don't, it makes you a lot happier. Think about the things that you have that many others don't. If you're in an industrialized country, you have more than 90% of the population has. A lot of people in the world don't have Netflix, Disney Plus, internet connection, or even food and water. If you could remember a time when you faced the bottom, felt completely helpless, been without your resources, or just felt alone, think about all the things that you have now that you didn't have before. For me, there was a time where I didn't have a place to live. I had everything in my car and just bounced around. And I reached out to a friend who found a place for me eventually. But I know what it's like to not have a roof over your head. I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to be embarrassed to be living out of your car. And that's why I'm grateful. What are you grateful for? If you have any other mental health exercises you recommend, put them down in the comments below. And if you're struggling with your anger, there's help, there's hope. You can practice these exercises. And if you need more help, check out the link below. And until next time guys, never give up on yourself.